Hey everyone, I'm Jenny Robertson, founder of the On Purpose Woman Global Community and founder and publisher of On Purpose Woman Magazine. I'm here to share the speaker portion of our Connections After Hours gathering of the On Purpose Woman Global Community. Shelly O'Connell is speaking on the key elements of flirting. Shelly is a flirting coach for women and the author of Finding Your Voice. She coaches women to gain confidence, flirting, enhance their skills, add sizzle to relationships, move past patriarchal limits about flirting, and reclaim the gifts of play. Her professional goals are to have women experience their joy and radiance through fun and engaging programs. Shelly lives in Northern California with her husband, Kevin, where she enjoys painting, dancing, being in nature, and of course, flirting. So Shelly, you are on. Thank you, Jenny. It's good to be here. Just prior to uh, going into the talk, I asked a question of the ladies here, and it was, what messages have you received about flirting? And I won't go into all the details that people shared, but some commonalities that I've heard for a while, a long while, are um, you know, unsure about it. If, if you're flirting, it might mean that you're sending a message that you're a loose woman, you know, you want to have sex with a guy. Not necessarily. It can mean that. It depends on you. Um, so I want to take a look at first where we are on flirting, uh, what we've been taught a little bit, and really some of those things that we have learned as women is just basically made up rules. They're they're made up rules from the patriarchy and they benefit men and they counter, they, you know, they counter dict each other. Um, they like, for example, oh, be sexy, but not that sexy. Oh, well, yeah, you can flirt with me, but you know, I expect to have sex. No, you, you know, if you're flirting with that guy, that means you want something. So they're, they're very mixed, mixed messages. I don't think that's by accident. Just let me say, <laughs> you, you know, you don't make a bump bunch of rules for people that have no power and women have power we have uh, quite a lot so uh, in unpacking that that's one of the first things to think about for the key elements is we've sort of been told some things about flirting that probably are not true I like to think of flirt flirting as uh, a form of play it's something that we do for our enjoyment. It's not something that we're doing to gratify someone else. Um, they may benefit you know, from it, but it's entirely up to us. And so some of the, the really basic things that we have to start with is there. Um, I believe that women don't have nearly enough fun. <laughs> We've been conditioned out of place since early, early childhood. Most of us um, have been taught to be taking care of everyone else, you know, and playing secretary for the man in our life most of the time. Like, you know, he can't make his own doctor's appointments, let's say, <laughs> or those types of things. And it, it's a way to sort of limit us because how often do we make the list for ourselves? We've got all of these things that we're doing if we're in a relationship, then you know we're supposed to take care of all our partner's needs. If we have children, them too. And you know, if we're working, that's part of it also. So what I'm saying is let's reframe it as a form of play, something that we do because it's enjoyable. It doesn't mean necessarily that we want to have sex with someone. So the first place that we start, the very first key element after understanding how it's made up rules about things, this flirting topic um, that have led us you know, to not be confident, to not be playing, to not do these things. So that's the first thing. But then we go right into boundaries. You know, um, there are a lot of reasons that women put a little wall around themselves, right? Because of you know, being concerned about their safety. Sometimes, uh, you know, men will, under the guise of what they would call flirting, I wouldn't call it flirting. They're trying to be predators. That's not flirting, you know? Um, and as women, we have a really great uh, internal compass that tells us if it's safe or not most of the time. 
when we're flirting, if we can create for ourselves boundaries, we don't have to tell anybody else about what our boundaries are. That's something that we create for ourselves within ourselves. I'll tell you a couple of mine. I'm married. I've been married for 36 years. I uh, lived with him before that. Still the most fun to flirt with. So I have a boundary within myself that I'm married and faithful. Now, why do I have that boundary? Because he's not the only person I flirt with. Hmm, how about that? <laughs> but that line is there. It's never going to go beyond that. It's always going to be just a gentle, playful thing. The other boundary that I have within myself is respect. It's something that maybe I didn't know to have as a boundary when I was a younger woman. And so I would have men sometimes be inappropriate. I never have that now. I've not had that for ages because it was something that I created within myself. And that's the other part about the key elements of flirting. It's all about you. It's not about someone else. It's all about you. Um, so if we can start with those things and we do the boundaries and we reframe flirting as a form of play, we can then begin to engage in flirting in a gentle, gentle starting way, right? To try some things out. And what begins to happen, it's really interesting. When we're playing, as you would observe small children, there is a difference in our energy. We oftentimes are laughing. You know, we're more open and receptive. We, we shine a bit brighter is the way I like to think of it. And when those things happen, when we do flirt and we're, we're playful and we're thinking of it in that way, we also become more connected to people, more engaged. Um, you know, it, if you've ever been at a event, you know, family and friends or maybe, you know, barbecue, and there's that one person that everybody just is gravitating to, think about some of the things that are part of their personality. You know, what's going on with them? And I would, I would venture to say that a lot of the things that are going on is that they are, they are open. You know, they, they just have this kind of maybe happy essence about them, right? Doesn't mean you have to be happy all the time, not, not saying that. But when they're doing that, they have that happy, happy energy, you know, that kind of engagement with life. That is a very attractive quality. We all want to be around people like that. Um, flirting certainly does enhance your sex appeal. I've had for years and years and years, my friends say, something to me about how men respond to me. I, I just always shrugged the shoulder and I'm like, men just love me. That was always my standard answer, you know? I didn't really have to unpack that until I had um, a friend of mine at a women's conference we went to together ask me if I could help her remember how to flirt. She used to do that and she had forgotten. And so we began to do that. Um, and then other women began to comment on men's uh, interactions and things with me. And I didn't really know them, you know, I met them at the conference. I came home from there and I wrote Finding Your Flirt. It's just a little book that's, that will, you know, has some tips and exercises. I kept it purposely small because I didn't want to overwhelm people with too much information like some help, self-help books can do. I want you to be able to do, read the exercises or the tips and do the exercises so that you can gain confidence and on, you know, take a fresh look at flirting and begin to have some fun, more fun, more play, more engagement, more connection. Um, and the other thing that's interesting that happens about that is you then begin to actually have opportunities come to you that you may not have had before. Why is that? Because it's all energy, right? Everything is related. If you are resonating at an energy where you're open and happy and paying attention and connected and reading signals from people, but not in a, oh, I have to make sure I'm safe kind of a way, but in a way of, oh, I'm, I'm interested in this person. You don't have to change who you are. If you're, if you're introverted, you can still be a, in, engaged in flirting. You just do it on your terms, what feels comfortable for you.
it doesn't mean you got to go out there and be like, oh, hey, I'm going to start flirting with all these people. That's me. <laughs> and, and I don't flirt with everybody, but I do use flirting um, quite frequently. I use it in a variety of ways. <clears throat> if I see like a cashier at the grocery store or something having a bad day, it doesn't matter to me if it's a woman or a man. I'm going to gently flirt with them because um, I'm doing it in a playful way. And instantly their energy is going to go up. And so will mine because I'm having fun. You know, and it's, it's easy. It's just something really, really super simple to do. So in, in the key elements, we're thinking about, uh, Christy just asked a question. Can I give some examples of how to flirt? Yes, how to flirt. Okay, well, I would say that another key element is the eyes. Eyes have got it in flirting. They're the very first things that, that uh, we notice with people. Like we might, we might be walking towards someone, let's say we're out and we're walking towards someone, we might notice them, right? Oh, that's a fill in the blank person, you know, whatever descriptor you put in there. Um, but it's not gonna go any farther than that unless we connect and look in their eyes. Now, I have, uh, you also got to know some of your skills. Like, you know, Christy, you asked the question, you have very, very vivid blue eyes, right? So she's already, if she knows that, and she knows that about her eyes, I'm using this example because you asked the question, <laughs> um, then you can use that. I have the ability to lift up one eyebrow. So, you know, just like, hey, <laughs> right? I don't even have to say, hey, I can make the hey my eyebrow. It's sort of like a wink, but without doing the wink, because the wink is a little more elevated in the game of flirting. You can do it, you know, but it's just something that I have naturally that I know I can play to and do. So first is kind of knowing some of those, those gifts that you have your own self. And that's where I'm very good in helping women who maybe don't know what their gifts are. I'll be like, oh, well, hey, you know, the, the friend that I helped, uh, she is a, a sensual person. By that, I mean, she, you know, she's very much senses. She sees and feels and touches and textures and all of this stuff. But she also, the way that she moves her body, that's just part of who she is. She didn't even know that about herself. You know, it's like, oh, men are trying to like fall all over themselves to say hello to you and you're not even getting it. So we'll go back to the eyes. So when you're, when you're um, wanting to flirt, let's say, you can do a connection with just your eyes. If you're more shy, you could lower your eyes when someone looks at you and then look back up, right? I had a friend, I suggested to her, she used her eyes in that way. She said, um, I, I didn't tell her to lower her eyes. She said, oh, this guy was looking at me from across the room, but I put my, you know, I, I, got, I got scared, <laughs> I got intimidated. And so I lowered my eyes. She, and she said, and when I looked back up, I thought, oh, I blew it. He's not looking at me anymore. And I said, no, no, not necessarily. Don't, don't throw in the towel yet. <laughs> you can lower them and look up again. He's gonna check back. Why? Because most men have not lost their ability to play. Very, very easy to engage men in play. And like I said, we're, we're reframing fl flirting as a form of play. So women have lost that, as I said earlier, most women. But most men have not. Doesn't matter if they're married, doesn't matter if they're, you know, standing there with somebody else. It doesn't really matter. You don't have to wait for like the first people, like, you know, this guy's all by himself, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> if you keep it light and playful, most men are going to engage. And if there's some, I always say, if there is someone who doesn't, you know, want to play he's a guy that doesn't want to play he's probably got more stuff going on just move on there's always another guy <laughs> that wants to play just this is part of how it is 
So the eyes are the first contact. You can send message to with your eyes without saying anything, without winking, without raising your eyebrow, just by your thought. It translates through the eyes. You know, we were, uh, my husband and I were once at a, uh, uh, an event that we would go to pretty regularly. We had regular friends there and it was a week, weekend long thing. We're working, helping people and this kind of thing. And I was pretty tired, but I was also feeling a little frisky that day. So my friend was doing the night shift and he's my husband's friend too. We're all really great friends. And um, so I was awake. He, he had just woken up. I was doing the you know, day shift that day. And he comes out and he stands in the doorway and he's like, what time is it? And I didn't say a word, but in my mind, I was thinking, you know what time it could be? <laughs> and immediately he received that signal and deep male chuckle laughing. Nothing was ever said and never went any farther than that. He knows it's never going to go any farther than that because I have clear boundaries. But you can send a message that way with your eyes. Everybody thinks it's about the body and body language, and that, that's important. But the very first, very first um, connection is with the eyes. So <laughs> it's, it's sometimes intimidating because we have all this, you know, this baggage on us about what flirting is and isn't, and if we're going to be a good girl or not, and, you know. Um, you know, those, those made up rules I was talking with Jenny earlier and I says like a little, you know, they're trying to put women in a little tiny box. We've never been in that little box. We never have. You can't contain us there. It's, we're just too magnificent. I think women are amazing. Men are too. But we have this uh, radiance that has been shut down oftentimes because we've been taught that we can't enjoy life, that we can't play, that we can't flirt um, and these types of things. But I'm telling you, if you try it and you, you practice and get better, not only all the things that you just mentioned <clears throat> about connection and engagement and building your confidence, uh, what also happens is your energy gets bigger. Because it's, it's, it's not, you're not saying, you know, whether it's those old tapes running around, I can't do this, or, you know, I need to take care of all these other things first. You're putting yourself on the list. And um, so what happens when you're engaged in play through flirting is you begin to shed those walls, that box wall, and those layers. And when that happens, you're your more your energy is emanating more and it's that happier engaged energy and i think that's why for years i you know it's been my reality for as long as i can recall men respond to me the way that they do i don't we have to be flirting with them they're just you know all i could be trying to get something off the shelf at the grocery store i'm only five four and i'm probably reach and stand on my toes and I will tell you I'm, I'm for sure more more times than not cussing under my breath because you know they always put the stuff I need way too high and I'll turn around there's some dude standing there waiting to see if they can help me it's just how it is you know so I had to with my friend and writing the book and um you know then becoming a flirting coach I really had to unpack what was it that was different that they were seeing in me. Um, and that's what I have learned and discovered that is when I'm flirting, it doesn't mean I always remember, you know, I get busy task oriented and I forget sometimes too, to even flirt with my husband. Um, but when I don't, I feel like you can see my shoulders are a little high. They'll be way high, <laughs> really high. And then I'm like, oh, man, my shoulders are really tight. You know, maybe, yeah, massage is great. But you know, once a month, twice a month, massage. I'm saying flirting can help you be playful every single day, every single day. You know, you just have to remember that it is 
it's a tool that kind of unlocks the key to you, a bigger expression of you, a more radiant, fun time of you. And it can enhance your relationship. I think you guys have heard the story where my husband wouldn't forgot to lock the door when he leaves in the morning. Maybe not. Okay. I'll try to tell this one quickly. <laughs> Flirting can turn anything around in a relationship just that fast too. You know, if you've ever lived with a man, you know what I mean? There's days we don't even like them. I mean, there's probably days they don't like us. I don't know, but I know there's days I don't even like them. So he kept leaving and locking the door. And this, you know, this was important to me. I live in a pretty busy area. And, but I said to him, first time, this is important to me because you please remember to lock the door because I'm still asleep when he leaves. He leaves pretty early. Um, he kept forgetting. So the irritation, the shoulders got higher. The irritation on me just kept growing, right? Until I was like, lock the door. No, and we would have arguments about it. And I'm like, this is, this is this man. I don't know what's going on, but it is really starting to make me not a happy camper. So um, when he, he always calls me at lunchtime, that's not a thing about flirting. You always have that connection. I don't ask him to call me. He wants to call me, you know? So just saying, moving on. Um, he calls me at lunchtime and I'm like, I'm going to change this up today. He forgot to lock the door again. I am not going to have a conniption. I'm not going to be angry. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to flirt. So I flirted with him. And then I was like, oh, yeah, babe, guess what? You forgot to lock the door. On the other end, there's like 30 seconds of silence, which I let wait. You know, silence is powerful. And he's like, oh, oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> he starts to listen. No, no, no. You know, and I flirted with him some more. And then I said, I'll tell you what. You know, you might not be able to come home, get in the door when you come home. He's like, I have a key. I said, yeah, but see, my grandson, my daughter and grandson live with us for a little while. And then, you know, Bessie's not here now. But once they start walking, they want to try to open the door when they can. So I put in a little bar that's from the inside. You can't unlock it from the inside or from the outside. So I said, oh, yeah, but remember that little bar? You might not be able to get in. He's like, shoot. <laughs> I hear him. I said, I'll tell you what. If you bring offerings, I might reconsider. And he just started laughing. You know, he just started like a deep, deep chuckle, belly laugh chuckle. He's like, I can do that. I'm like, all right, sweetheart, I'll see you later, sugar. And I'm flirting, you know, flirting it up. I'm drawing out my accent because I, you know, I can do that <laughs> very easily and exaggerating it because that's another tool that I have. <clears throat> so the match is a little bit. He came home and I was like, about an hour, this was at lunchtime, so about an hour before he came home at 5.30, I was like, oh, shoot, yeah, but I, I better put that bar across the door. So sure enough, he tried his key. I heard the key. He opens the door. It won't go because the bar is there. He's like, hey, <laughs> hi. And he's trying to be you know, real nice. And I go and I like peek around the door. I'm like, do you bring offerings? He had a bottle of wine, flowers, and chocolate. Yeah, he came in, we had a fun evening, we, we played, we laughed. I think we even had a dance party maybe that night. He's never forgotten to lock the door since. Now this was an ongoing problem for at least several months. Yeah. So you can change anything with flirting in your relationship. You can shift it. And if you don't have a relationship and you're interested in Getting one, flirting can help you to get there too. And it can keep the relationship alive. So I, I just feel like it's, it's a sort of superpower <laughs> that I have that I want to share with all the women that I possibly can because uh, you also have it. You just don't know that it's a superpower yet. Now you know. Everyone here knows. Bessie will listen to the recording. She'll know. I think she knows because she's already uh, taken some of the tips from the book. She told me she read the book and started flirting with her husband and some things that happened was really fun. So I think that it's a way that you can 
live a little more fully bigger of yourself in a in a really fun delightful engaged way and who doesn't want to be having that more in life yes <laughs> is that it shelly i think that would be it thank you unmute yourselves and let's clap really loud for shelly <laughs> since there's only a few of us here right now Hey, Shelly, that was so good. Thank you so much. Okay, what's your call to action? My call to action is, well, you could start with buying the book if you want to just dip your toes in. You could also go to my website, which is uh, www.shellyoconnell.com. And I don't know if, how many of you here are married. I know Christy's married and Jenny's married. So there's it's half and half. Oh, okay. I'm having a master class. Uh, let's see. I think we'll say that's the 27th. I'll put it in the in the um, comments and after too. And it is three key tips to attract a guy master class. It'd be fun. You'll get a chance to practice the tips, learn them, practice them, ask questions of me, pick pick my brain, like. Uh, be a little more detailed and like well how would I do this because I'm you know intimidated by men or because you know I feel like I've done it in the past and I was too over the top or whatever whatever question that it is and it's an hour and a half and you know, let me I could do that now look at it it is September 27th 7 p.m to 8 30 p.m eastern it's 57 dollars totally fun and I also do uh, individual flirting coaching. I have uh, a, a full program that you can do, or we can do one on one on one, one at a time. Basically, that's where I go more in depth than what I've talked about with you today. And then we talk about your flirting goals and challenges. You get you come up with ideas and things together. You go practice it. Come back. We do it again until you're refined and have the confidence that you feel. If you're in a relationship, I also have a membership for um, people who want to enhance uh, the relationship through flirting. And that's a monthly membership. You get like a master class and one-on-one -on -one with me and all this different stuff that's on, the, that's on the blog on the website. You can read some of the things I've written in the blog. Thanks, Mary. Okay, thank you, Shelly. And for anyone watching this, Shelly's website is in the text portion of the video here. And I want to thank anyone who's watching us live or the replay. If you'd like to join us for one of our 11 free Zoom gatherings a month or an in-person in Richmond, Virginia or Charlottesville, Virginia, comment below and I'll tell you how to do that. Or you can just go to my website, OPWGC, and find out all about our community. Thanks for watching.